Good evening. Welcome along to Would I Lie to You, the show all about lies and liars. On Lee Max team tonight, it's as if the grey clouds have parted and a ray of sparkling sunshine glitters down to catch a butterfly's wing as it lands gently on a summer flower. It's Jack D. <laughs> and a man who is half English and half Polish, which means that he's constantly trying to book himself to tile his own bathroom. <laughs> it's Peter Serafinovich. Racist. Racist. And on David Mitchell's team, a woman who stars in Gavin and Stacey, with me, uh, had a number one hit, with me, <laughs> and later will be going home in a taxi. It's Ruth Jones! <laughs> and what can I say about this man that hasn't been said before? He's Britain's tallest fireman, it's Jason Manford! <laughs> Right, off we go with uh, round one. It's Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them, and to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction, and Ruth is first. Oh, Ruth, hi. would you reveal all, please? Hmm. I once secretly swapped sandwiches with Rob on the set of Gavin and Stacey because a dog licked mine. Uh, is that right? Seriously? Well, we don't know yet, do we? Um, what was the dog doing on the set? It was a dog that we feature in the show, Gavin and Stacey. Called? Oh, um... No, what's the no, show I called? Just... <laughs> oh, Gavin and Stacey. Is there, ah, is she's there a good. dog in Gavin and Stacey? <laughs> yes, and it, he runs The one that runs along the promenade? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did it have any negative effects on, on, on Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's the sort of effect it's likely to have? A dog is things that you would slowly become a dog. <laughs> I think it's been more some sort of bacterial infection than well, actually you know. morphing into a canine. Well, here's, OK, here's the thing. Uh, a young student in America, Peter Parker, got bitten by a radioactive spider. What was the sandwich? Cheese and onion. And you let, you let me eat it? Well, it was a bit of a bet. I was a... No, so was... everybody was in on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's prompted a, a, a confession in me. Uh, we, we're having people over for dinner, and our dog got onto the table and uh, started eating one of the starters but while everyone else was having drinks. And uh, my wife uh, just got it out of its mouth again and put it and just, just pat... <laughs> Just, just patted it, and um, and so I made sure Rob sat there. <laughs> Sorry, Not true. No. Ne never, never been to his house. No, never will. <laughs> so when the dog did, the dog just take one lick and off he went. It, the, it was the sandwiches at tea time. That come at tea time. Let's they call were... them the tea time sandwiches. What? <laughs> New word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, there's, there's a big platter of them. I put some on my plate. I put it down to go and make myself a cup of tea. The dog... So you put it down on what? Uh, it was one of those, you know, those big tables, trestle tables. Uh, anyway, I saw the dog out the corner of my eye lick the sandwich. You said a trestle table, though. Trestle yeah. tables are quite reasonable. They're not coffee tables, are they? They're high up. That dog must have actually got up on the table. No, but it was a big dog. <laughs> oh, he's got rabies! <laughs> <laughs> I am. Look at this. It's, it's coming out now that I know no. about it. I think we should move on because Rob wants to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed I've been allowed up on the furniture, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Lee, on that note, let's, uh, let's take a guess here. I, I think Ruth is, is too nice to have done this, but on the other hand, she's, she's, there's a little bit of guilt there. There's a little bit of guilt. She's Come on, it's, it's hardly the JFK conspiracy. <laughs> 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 a dog licked a sandwich. I believe that would happen. That like JFK. That's a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack, what do you think? I say true. You say true? True. You say true. I'll have to go with the team okay, and say true. you're saying true. Ruth, is it true or is it a lie? Rob? It's a lie! Oh, yeah, thank God. God. <laughs> It's the best news we've had all series. It's a lie. Uh, Jack D, you're next. I developed a word association system to remember people's names, but gave it up when it backfired on me. David. Um, what, what was the word association system? Um, 
Did I develop? To help remember people's <laughs> names. It was, I, Jack, um, you've just got a bit of fluff on you. Thank you very much. Keep thinking. Oh, so. no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what I do is I attach uh, a quality to someone and then, try and, and then try and relate that quality to the person's name. So, just for example, so, what would that uh, be? So, Jason Manford, if I, if I think Jason and the Argonauts, and that, that would perhaps... And then next time I'll see you, I'll think uh, it, Argonauts will make me think of Jason. What's Argonaut like about Jason? <laughs> Uh, uh, for instance, ju Jason the Argonauts, mm. I might therefore J an Argonaut gives me Juggernaut. Right. And you look to me like a lorry driver. Right. <laughs> so, therefore, I would think lorry driver Jason. And then when you next meet him, you say, hi, Yorkie, how are you? He's, well, uh, it, it when, has been known is, to is, backfire. Which is where we come to the hilarious backfiring anecdote. Oh, um, <laughs> that was a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> We, we met someone uh, on holiday, and um, he uh, was he, his name was Charles, and he wore uh, very big sunglasses, like 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 a, only a blind person would wear. Mm. And um, so I thought that's brilliant, Ray Charles, because I will remember, I remember from the sunglasses, and therefore I will get Charles. And then the very so next year when we go, I can confidently say hello, Charles. But it didn't work, because 12 months later and you've slightly forgotten what, what you'd set up as a system. So he walks in, I go, hello, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> where, did you, where did you meet him? Where was it? On the holiday. Where was it? <laughs> in Holidayville. Yeah. <laughs> Just in Do uh, Dorset, it was in Dorset. And what, so you were in a pub, you were in a pub and he walked over and you went, Stevie? Uh, he came out, uh, yeah, it was the following year and I saw him again. Uh, in, did he in, live in, round there? Where were you sat? No, he was a fellow holiday maker. So, and you, de you developed a, a sort of mild acquaintanceship with a man whose name you could barely remember, but yes. planned to holiday with him again. <laughs> no, there was no plan involved, David. We didn't get together and say, are you going to be here next year? Yes, are you? But you obviously thought it was a possibility, because you already had a plan for remembering his name. Oh, I perhaps I didn't explain name. correctly yeah. that I'd seen him the previous year at the same place, and and not known his name. So now it's three years of your <laughs> So for three years, you and Charles holidayed with, with metronomic regularity <laughs> at the same place in Dorset. You kind of escaped Well, that's the man. not so unusual. People tend to frequent the same oh. place for holidays. Year one, you, you see him, but you don't exchange names. And then year yes. two, you yeah. learn his name. To, to clarify this point, year one, there's no reason why I would know his name, because I haven't been introduced to him. No. Th there's no reason for you to know yeah. his name at all. Year two, I had forgotten his name, but endeavoured to remember it for the third year. <laughs> right. All right, David. Is that the truth, or is it part of Jack's impish sense of fun and a lie? Um, I think it's the truth. Do you? I think it's a lie. I think... I think it's true. I think I'm going to go for true. Fine, that's all right. You know. You're but saying true? That's fine. Yeah. That's the team decision. OK. Jack D. It was... Uh, true. Oh, hey. That's me. Very good. Well done. Don't believe me. <laughs> it's true. Jack did develop a word association system to remember <laughs> people's names, but gave it up when it backfired on him. Uh, right. Uh, Jason, you're next. OK. Uh, for ten years, I refused to go into any branch of McDonald's after a girl dumped me in one. <laughs> what, you mean this girl took you there and left you there? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, OK, so you phoned ahead, made the reservation. <laughs> I'm terribly um, sorry, Mr Manford, <laughs> I'm very busy tonight. Uh, um, <laughs> How old are you? Um, I was 16, she was 15. Oh, hello. Uh, so, actually illegal. <laughs> <laughs> you were on a date with her, or...? Yeah, well, I think we'd been to the cinema and then afterwards we'd gone to the McDonald's. So when you were at the cinema, mm -hmm. had you perhaps committed something of an indiscretion at the cinema, which prompted her then to end the relationship at the fast food restaurant? Um, I'd chosen Jumanji. <laughs> um, Can I ask, did she eat? her meal before she <laughs> finished with you? Um, I ate them both, I think, crying. <laughs> oh, I see. Finally, uh, can I ask you, Jason, what prompted you to make a return to McDonald's in the end? I think I was, um, needed a wee, like everyone else. <laughs>
<laughs> but it was ten years, a whole ten yeah, years so that you only, didn't enter that restaurant. Two, three years ago. Wow. I went back, finally went back in, I, I looked that clown in the eye and I walked right into that. <laughs> she was still there. She was still there. <laughs> What do we think, Jack? I, I think he's telling the truth. I think he's dumping material he wouldn't dare do on stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you say true? true? I'll go for true. You're right. for true. True. They're saying true. Jason Ranford, are you telling the truth? It is the truth. Oh. 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 What, a, what a roller coaster of a life you've led. Yes, it's true. Jason, you've never been able to get over that girl dumping you all those years ago, but I can tell you now that she's here tonight. <laughs> she's not. Um, no, 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 it was a physical joke. <laughs> so, our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. So please welcome Ian. <laughs> so, Ruth, what is Ian to you? This is Ian, and Ian uh, saved my tortoise's life when he was about to be crushed to death at a recycling plant. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Jason, perhaps you'd like to explain that, how you know Ian? Uh, this is Ian. Uh, me and Ian got assaulted by some school kids uh, when we were promoting uh, a local butcher's. I was dressed uh, as a sausage and he was dressed, dressed as a chop. <laughs> OK. And finally, David, your relationship with Ian? Um, this is Ian. Uh, I bought ten packs of AA batteries from Ian on eBay, and he sent me a hundred packs by mistake. <laughs> God. <laughs> so, there we have it. Ruth's tortoise's lifesaver, Jason's sausage friend, or David's eBay seller. Lee's team, where do you want to start? Well, Jason, you were the sausage, weren't you? I was a sausage, he was a chop. <laughs> what, uh, when was this? Well, I was doing a bit of acting and stuff at uni, and there was a promotions firm. And we went out dressed as sort of hilarious, you know, well, things. Was he in at the university as well? No, we met at the promotions. What butchers? Um, it was just like a, a Summit and Son, I think, in, oh, in, that's... in Manchester. Oh, <laughs> well, you mean like all the names of all the butchers? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want. The thing that I'm not sure about his story is that when he was younger, he was a very big lad. He was, yeah. Now, that's not the look you want for a sausage, is it? <laughs> Traditionally Surely. long and thin rather than sort of. Hey, oh, right, it... mate, have you come as a burger? No, no I'm a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you said there was an, an, an attack? Well, we've been there since, like, we got there early doors when they, they, they opened it up and that, and they got a little local celeb to cut the ribbon and everything. Who was the local celeb? Uh, <laughs> uh, it was Curly Watts, Kevin Kennedy. So he came in, he cut the, uh, the ribbon. Can I just ask, what was Kevin Kennedy like? <laughs> <laughs> No, it was nice, it was nice chop. Nice right. chop. <laughs> <laughs> he was dressed up as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So later on, it got to about three, half three, and um, obviously school kicking out time, we're obviously dressed... Deliciously. Uh, deliciously. <laughs> <laughs> they started picking on us, they were about 11. 11? How old were you? I was about 19, but I was dressed as a sausage leg. <laughs> yeah. uh, these 11 year olds were picking on us, calling us names and that. What names? What names? <laughs> <You know>. Yeah. <laughs> Sausage. Like, sausage. Chop. Uh, you choppy <laughs> bastard. And that. You meaty prick. Um, no, that sounds worse, actually. That sounds, worse. that sounds like a compliment. Um, they pushed me over. And obviously I'm in a sausage suit, so I can't, I can't get up. Did you actually explode or had you pricked yourself in advance? <laughs> That's a nice sausage joke. Shut your I like face. <laughs> OK, uh, David, this uh, wild and crazy story about over getting too many batteries. <laughs> yes, yes, for you. Yeah. So you buy, you buy ten packets of uh, AA. Mm -hmm. well, how many batteries in a packet? Two. Two? Two. So you bought ten packets of two? Yes. But, you know, surely you would buy a big box of, ba like, 24. There was, a, there was a deal on eBay for packets of rechargeable <laughs> batteries. Sorry, David, when was this? That three or four years ago? Your career three or four years ago was going all right. Yeah. Are you telling me that you were getting back from Peak Show and going, yeah, it went all right, but yeah. uh, let me see how I can save money on batteries. <laughs> <laughs> to, 
to be honest, I, I came to a decision in my life three or four years ago that I wasn't going to continue with my previous battery regime. <laughs> So I decided I was going to buy a load of rechargeable batteries and have them on a sort of loop mm. forever and I... ever and ever. I would never, ever, ever again, ever have to buy a battery. <laughs> what needs 10, 10 batteries? Well, no, like there's the remote control for one television, the remote control for another television. Ooh, one. Mr. Two television. <laughs> So he sends you ten, ten times the amount. Yeah. So he sends you uh, hundred two... packs of two. Oh, so two hundred so batteries. Which I must admit was more than I had a use for. Yeah. <laughs> Did you pay using PayPal or a credit card? <laughs> I sent a check. <laughs> True. Yeah. I think this story's got a lot of positives and negatives. <laughs> Right, Ruth, uh, so, t talk us through the recycling story. Uh, OK, my tortoise... Whose name is...? Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain literally went, what begins with T? <laughs> Tom the tortoise. Yes. Tom. Uh, he disappeared from our garden a couple of years well, ago. Well, they're known for running off quickly. <laughs> So your tortoise has vanished? It vanished. So after three days, we started to actually worry and uh, tried to work out where he may have gone. Right. Um, <laughs> Did you go into his room and look at his diary? <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, he's, he's been groomed on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we did then worry that maybe he'd climbed into a bin bag and been taken away with the rubbish. So we phoned up the council and explained the dilemma. And they said, we'll go through the rubbish and we'll get back to you in a couple of days. Yes, because they're cooperative like that, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> if you have one of those phone calls, if you're worried your tortoise is in the rubbish, press two. <laughs> so then uh, five weeks went by. Did you put, like, posters up like you do with cats? Did, did you? <laughs> tortoise missing. Answer to, to the did. name of... Tom. <laughs> Five weeks after he'd gone missing, when I was feeling very sad, uh, we got a phone call saying, we've found a tortoise in the recycling uh, plant. Let me ask you this, did they find it in a specific part of the recycling area, like in the plastics? Uh, they found it on the conveyor belt, on the, the can crusher bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You're saying this is now like a Disney film? It was... It was... It was... It was... It was... Film, wouldn't it? I think, uh, anyway, it was about, th about 30 seconds away oh. from the can crusher. Oh, wow. give it a rest. <laughs> Ruth, you, <laughs> you ruined the story for yourself now. 30 yeah. seconds away? Well, yeah. But he was close to the end of the line, about to go in. Yeah. So all the other people on the line, they'd just missed the tortoise. They'd gone, uh, I do cans, I do plastic. Who's going to do the tortoise? Not my job. <laughs> That's not my job. I don't do tortoises. Do you do tortoises? I don't do tortoises. <laughs> so, all right, there we are. What do you think? Lee's team. I think it's David's story. I think it's the, the ba battery. I think he's the, the battery, battery sales man person. Yeah. Ian is exactly how I imagine someone like that would look. An online <laughs> battery seller. To look. Yes. Yes. I don't think for one minute Ruth has got a tortoise. I think or has Ruth. ever had it. Because tortoises, they don't survive the cold. She lives in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think. Well, who do we think? Does my opinion count for anything? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Jason or David? And, 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 uh, should we go for David? Go on then. Yeah. I'd say David, David yeah. Go on then. You're saying David. David. You're saying it's the online battery David. sales. Yeah. yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Ian, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Ian. I work for a recycling plant with a farm group <laughs> called... Oh, <laughs> Yes, Ian saved Ruth's tortoise's life seconds before it was about to be crushed in a recycling plant. Thank you so much, Ian. <laughs> so, Ruth, I, that was incredible. Um, is everything with the Toy Story bit on the... On the yes. All oh, true. really called Tom. He's really called Tom. Now, we've got a picture, actually. Right. Oh, there you are. Well, You're about Tom. to eat the tortoise. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Um... Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. We start with... It's Lee. I've placed a £500 bet at the bookies that I'll live till I'm 100. <laughs> David, 
Leeds team, what do you think? Mm. <clears throat> when did you place this bet? I placed this bet when I was 18 years old. And what odds did they offer? They offered odds of 1,000 to 1. 1,000 to 1. And you, sorry, how much did you bet again? £500. So, when you're 100, you stand to gain what? £47.38. <laughs> <laughs> You now? I'm 41. Right, so... 500,000 pounds. <laughs> 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 Got it. Nice. Well done. <laughs> so you're only a couple of years younger than me. At 18, 500 pounds is quite a lot of money back then. It was. It was Where did you get 500 pounds from? I inherited it from my granddad, oh. who reached the age of 100. Oh. And I your, thought that would be an appropriate thing to your do. Your granddad was 100 but before you were 18. your dad when you're 18? <laughs> Sorry? When you were 18... <laughs> when you were 18, your grandfather was 100. Yes. yes. No. So he yes. was 82. Your grandfather was 82 when you were born. Right? Can we stop calling him Grandad and give him his proper name of Step Grandad? He was your step grandfather. Well, yeah, you still, you still just... decided that after your grandfather died, your grandmother married a much, much older man. Well, she, she, was, she was very old. She was very old when she had my. Yeah. My well, why, dad. Did you, why did how you old, decide? How old was your grandmother when she had your dad? She 71? was 71. About... <laughs> <laughs> she, she was 45 when she had my granddad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sense, no, that man. she was 45 when she had. The maths might make sense, but why did you decide that the genes of your step granddad would be in you? <laughs> 500 pounds. That would have got you an airfare to Australia. 23 Surely years. Surely you'd have spent it on travelling or something like that. I just can't believe that she you would. Not... Oh yeah, I was grieving. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the time to go flying around the world. Well, There's very... nothing more upsetting than a you... step grandfather you... dying. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. We just none of us expected it. It's a lie. 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 Ruth thinks it's a lie. Jason yeah, thinks it's a lie. Lee, is it a lie or were you actually telling us the truth? It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's not true, but uh, Lee's going to feel like such an idiot if he does reach 100. Not because he didn't place the bet, but because he'll be wetting himself on a bus and telling strangers he used to be on the telly. <laughs> Next. Uh, Peter Serafinovich. Are you getting out of gun? <laughs> uh. <laughs> My first drink of the morning is always a mixture of tea and coffee. I call it cough tea. Um, Peter, be before you jump in, I couldn't help noticing you put on a pair of sunglasses there. Um, why? This is so I don't give away any uh, tells with my eyes. I'll take them off, okay? Yeah, you can't. Hey, but to be fair, still looks quite good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, you, it's disgusting, isn't it? Half tea, yeah, half coffee. I don't like it when you like the t same teaspoons used after a coffee into a tea. Mm. So to mix the two together, you, weird. <laughs> you like that, do you? It's well, I did it uh, by accident when I was about eight, and my mum was like, "What are you? What are you doing?" But then I had a swig of it. Oh, you would. Yeah. <laughs> you would. yeah. Can I ask? How do you make it? Do you make the tea in a pot and the coffee in a cafetiere and then pour it? Or do you do an instant and a, and a tea bag? And only really, I've only ever had it with instant. I don't mm. think you'd sort of sully a nice espresso or whatever with a, with with tea. a tea bag. Do you take sugar in yeah. your coffee tea? No, no. that would be weird. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> half white sugar and half brown sugar. <laughs> oh, pervert. <laughs> What's it called, the Ed Coffee? You could have called it Toffee. That would have sounded right. Yeah. There's already a thing called Toffee. Yeah. <laughs> I think the very fact that he said you wouldn't do it with proper coffee, only instant coffee, shows that he despises it as a concept. Yeah. He can't even, he can't bring himself. Otherwise, if you really meant this about coffee, you'd say, I use the finest coffee and the finest tea. David. And I blend them exactly listen, together. Can I just say, calm down, OK? <laughs> You sound like you've had too many cough teas today. <laughs> right, come on, David. 
Oh, well, I'm, I, what do you I think? I think absolutely it's a lie. Um, I think it's a lie as well. Yeah, I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? So, all right, yeah. Peter, is it the truth or is it a lie? I was telling the truth. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was a lie, and he even lied as he told us whether or not it was a lie. <laughs> Next. Uh, no, that's oh. me. Oh, right, oh, there we go. I once stole Catherine Zeta Jones's dinner money. What well, of course, you're both Welsh, so you presumably went to the same school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I applaud that, that thinly veiled racism. <laughs> what age were you? Um, I would have been um, school age, young, about, I don't know, 10. Catherine Zeta Jones is about, she's 40 odd. She's well, I'm 45. She's she's she was younger than me at school. And, well, and, and, now, and is even younger now. <laughs> so, yeah. so you, were, you were 10. You were 10. And she was about 5. five. <laughs> and you stole a 5 year old little girl's dinner money at the age, age of 10. 10. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> No, um, I, I didn't steal it as such. It was it was a misunderstanding. <laughs> what, right. What was the misunderstanding? How did it? How did her money end up in your hand? Oh, well, I arrived at school that day, and as I walked into the school, Catherine Zeta Jones's mother saw me and said, "I've forgotten to give Catherine her dinner money. Would you give her the dinner money?" And gave the dinner money to me. And uh, I forgot to give her the money, and I spent the money on sweets. And what was this school? It was called Swansea. School. Swansea. <laughs> Swansea. Swansea School. It was called Dumbarton. Oh, not Swansea then, Dumbarton. In Swansea. Mm. Oh right. Have you met her since? Like, on the... yes, I have actually. Yes. And have you met? Have you had a hilarious? Oh, oh tell time. us about when Here's you met her. Here's a free her. quid. I'll tell you uh, that when I when I met her. This is true. When I met her, which is not to say. <laughs> I was I met her at the BAFTAs when she won for Chicago and she had an American accent, that's the story. Oh right. She said, Give me my three pound bag, Bryden. <laughs> so what are you gonna say? Truth or lie? Lie. 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 It's gotta be a lie, lie. because you say uh, lie. You're too yeah. you're too an honest man not to have gone back and given it given it to her. So, David's team. I think it might be true. I'll go, I'll go with what Ruth says. Yeah, all right. We'll say it's true. Saying it's true. Yeah, yeah. You say it's a lie, you say it's true. So it is lie. true. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's true. I did once steal Catherine Zeta Jones's dinner money. Uh, it was a, a long time ago when we were kids. I, I now feel old age creeping up on me, as does Catherine every morning when <laughs> Michael fancies a cuddle. <laughs> And that sound tells us uh, time's up and it's the end of the show and I can reveal that David's team are the winners by eight points to three. Well, but it's not just a team game, my individual liar of the week is Ruth Jones. <laughs> yes, lovely Ruth Jones, whose irresistible South Wales charm is a bit like my irresistible South Wales charm, except that it's irresistible and charming. <laughs>